okay welcome too many welcomes today this evening and uh, i'm very excited uh, today to share the word with all of you guys before we really begin with the word it's going to be exciting it's going to surely encourage us and reach us this evening uh, before we begin the word any testimonies i i heard a couple of people wanted to share some testimonies so uh can you guys just a uh, share testimony yeah melissa melissa wanted to share yeah, yeah i want i actually have one testimony and that is um, i actually had lost I'm, i i resigned from a place recently in the month of march because i could not do the job and i was a little bit stressed up like you know i'm 5 months pregnant and over here people don't take people who are pregnant for work so i was a little bit stressed up no i used to apply hundred of places none of the thing is to come back so i spoke to brother vernal and he started praying for me and then um, even i used to pray and sometimes cynthia used to pray for intercession uh, she used to pray like people may get jobs financial security so i started praying very hard and one fine morning when i got up i got a thing like just go on linkedin and just me message that lady it was sent in 2023 the lady for the job but i applied in 2024 in the month of march and luckily they got back saying that there is a role it is not the way i wanted the job but it is okay for now financially like for financial stability it was fine so when i accepted i told them i'm pregnant but you know normally what people do is they don't even take interviews or don't even call you saying you're pregnant because they don't want the risk but these people called me i had my interview i cleared it i went for induction and i'm started working now and today is my fourth day that i'm working and it is a much relaxed job like earlier i used to do in shifts but this is eight hour job and plus i get my bank holidays and my normal holidays so i praise and thank god for giving me the job and thank you brother vernal and cynthia for praying for me always thank you so much what a wonderful uh, testimony here uh, and also why don't you share about a prophetic word that you we gave your mother a uh, little bit background on that and uh, what happened after that brother which one it is <laughs> I don't about remember your, about your pregnancy. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, uh, my mom and we were praying for long, long time now, two years. We we're praying to get pregnant. I'm, I to get pregnant, and I am, um, I'm right now thirty five years. So the last time I came to Goa, I was thirty four, and I checked myself, and they said that uh, I have thyroid, I have diabetes. It's very impossible when you have thyroid to conceive. and then again i came back uh, in 2023 i came back and uh, i went to doctor and doctor said look you have even uh, you know uh, this thing the cyst something follicles in your ovary it's very difficult and then doctor gave me some medications uh, for early ovulation and i came over here and i did it i did for 3 months nothing no news and my husband he smokes a lot he even stopped smoking so that i could get pregnant nothing happened and i'm so distressed and i said like okay and i i used to go for uh, meetings and i met brother vernal for one meeting and somehow my mother and i <laughs> came for the meeting in science gate we joined and brother gave me, brother vernal gave me a list of things like i should do like you know eating and encouraging me every day to you know take my blood sugar levels to follow the diet and to pray and i should have coming for even intercession and that helped me a lot actually and then um, in the month of november actually it is i think so in october yeah november i didn't even know i was pregnant i like my days swept by and i said like i am not getting my periods what to do and suddenly like when i was getting when i was in intercession i thought like okay let's, let's go and do the test and my mom was keep on telling me do the test do the test do the test but i was not listening to her because every time i used to do i used to feel disappointed i used to cry 
it would be a, like I used to go in depression mode. But then when I checked it, I found out I was pregnant. So I waited for one week and again I was pregnant. And then I showed it to brother Vandal and my mom. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And... But before that, we yeah. gave a prophetic word to your mother when she was, she's in Goa yeah. and you are in UK. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when my mom had come for the first time for brother Vernal's meeting, he had said that God is blessing my mother and to my mother, to me also. Actually, the angel recognized my parents as true with my birthday. And they were all sitting in one row, like, you know, January people in one row. So, you know, and that blessing, I never knew it was a baby for me because that was the biggest blessing I was waiting for. So awesome. that my prophecy came true. Awesome. <laughs> and awesome. Many more also. <laughs> awesome. Great. Greatly rejoice on this. Uh, we have, we have, uh, I don't know, uh, there's a person who has joined in from Dubai, Zina. Would you like to just short uh, testimony uh, on uh, what happened to you? Uh, if if you could, just a short one. If you don't mind. Uh, but your microphone is not uh, on. If possible, uh, you can just share a short testimony. Okay. Before we begin with the word. Okay, I think uh, we'll wait for her to come, but as... As she comes, uh, just before the uh, before the Zoom meeting, I just got a short testimony from this lady called Zina. So I would wanted I wanted her to share. Okay. So uh, at any point, Zina, if you want to share your testimony, you can just message in the chat below that you want to share and then uh, we can ask you to share okay guys welcome 28 people on board today we are uh, most of the christian people are celebrating something called as Monday thursday and uh, uh and uh, yeah uh, so today uh, uh, Christians believe today this whole week is a kind of a holy week and uh, am I on the spotlight? Okay. So uh, Christians believe uh, let me okay. Christians believe that this is like a holy week and it's a wonderful time and opportunity for all of us to spend more time in prayer uh, when such things uh, are uh, designed by the Christian community. And uh, today is Monday, Thursday. Tomorrow we have Good Friday and uh, Sunday is the Easter. So tomorrow, uh, Friday, we're going to have uh, another online service for people for all of us our ch church family but uh, tonight i'm going to share something very important and we just going to i'm try i'll 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 try to share what god has put in my heart and uh, let me discuss with you tonight on uh, uh, something that we are in a season to uh, i hope my screen is visible yeah. So something that uh, is uh, we are discussing, we are sharing in uh, on on Sundays, we are doing something called as missiology. Uh, and uh, last Sunday we were talking about missio, missio day means the mission of God. And uh, this day, Monday Thursday is I I I can relate completely towards this particular th uh, topic and uh, we're going to talk about first we're just going to re read the scriptures on 
uh, on this uh, mostly read on this day that is jesus uh, feet uh, feet washing okay now let's read the scripture mm. okay that is i think john chapter 13 verse 4 it says uh so he got up from the meal took off his outer clothing wrapped a towel around his waist after that he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples feet drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him he came to simon peter who said to him lord are you going to wash my feet jesus replied you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then, then Simon said, Lord, not just, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him and that was why he said not everyone was clean. Okay. So, uh, let me so wonderful scriptures here and uh, um, Christ many Christians and pastors and priests what they do, do this today is that they they make their church members sit uh, on the on the uh, on the stage and they will take and wash the feet of everyone but today what we are going to do is we are going to uh, really go uh, dive deep into what the scripture really means or what what is jesus trying to do and uh, what is the message behind the whole thing okay so uh, let's talk about uh Let's talk about what are the things that we see in this whole scripture. Okay. Now, uh, first is uh, we have the washing of the feet with the, with, with the water, right? So what does water mean, right? What does water mean? Let me share screen again with you. Okay, the word resembling water. If you go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26, John chapter 4, verse 14, it says, the metaphor of water is used to represent the cleansing and life-giving properties of God's word. So Ephesians speaks to the church being cleansed through the word, while in John, Jesus refers to himself as the living water that quenches spiritual thirst and grants eternal life. Okay, so basically washing the water resembles in the scripture water resembles uh, washing yourself with the word of god what was jesus doing jesus was uh, first uh, we see in the model here uh, in this entire scripture jesus who's the king of kings lord of lords whose god comes as human being he comes as human being and then he bows down at the feet of his disciples to wash their feet. In other words, though he was king of kings, he comes as a servant. And this is very important that we need to know is uh, something called as servant leadership. Today, uh, you see, I come from, I have a 15 years of ministry background. I've been uh, ministering for so many years. Uh, I have seen it all kind of thing, you know. I have seen how a, a leader, especially in Christendom, how a leader is uh, he, he, he's, he's put in on, on a high place, right? And then there's something that goes into 
the whole congregation starts doing something called as hero worship and uh, i was in that place and i realized something is wrong something is off here because i i i was into i just before covid i got into something called as the prophetic movement and uh, i was giving names and i still do that names numbers dates birth dates of people uh, very accurately and i had lot of prophet prophet friends with me and um, i used to host lot of them to our church in our church and i realized that something is off something is going off because i realized that uh, people are becoming dependent on one man and they are hero worshiping him is like that man is their hero and uh, and it's like the guy who is there controls everyone you know he he keeps controlling everyone he tells them what to do what not to do and everything is centered around that man but here we see jesus he is he is the hero but he is also a servant he comes down and he shows us and teaches the whole of christianity something called as servant leadership that means a leader is supposed to be a servant and in other words not just a leader but i'm saying we all are leaders in every area of our life some of you are leaders at your workplace some of you are leaders at home some of you are leaders uh in your friendship leadership is not just in a church setup or something to do with politics leadership is something that everyone carries in their life but what happens is when we have this leadership position uh we tend to be puffed up with that position but jesus here shows that we every leader has to have one quality and that quality is servant servanthood a leader should learn to be a servant to his to to people whom he is leading and so jesus as a leader comes down in a servant position and he tries he starts washing everyone's feet and that's where we need to understand and learn that if you consider yourself leader in any area of your life tonight as i'm sharing this word to you it's time to reflect and understand in which area you are a leader you might be a leader in your family uh you might be leader in friendships and in your society in any area you are a leader uh you need to understand that this is the model that jesus presents and that is being a servant coming down to, to a place where you lay down your life for somebody you lay down your life for your people whom you are leading that is a true leadership if we as leaders can't be servants then we can't be leaders actually okay then he goes forward and he washes the feet of his disciple now what does the water means what does washing of of the feet means means he is now uh, saying to the disciples here i'm feeding you with the word of god i'm feeding you with revelation i'm feeding you with the proceeding word of god and cleansing you up and equipping you uh, this act is to give you an experience to give you an encounter of the word of god and then washing the feet what does feet represent you know today morning one of our church members said to me uh, i saw a vision and i saw my feet i was wearing a sandal what does it mean and what does feet mean let let's go to the scriptures what does feet mean if you go to uh if you go to uh roman chapter 10 verse 15 roman chapter 10 verse 15 uh, let me share the screen let uh, me okay okay romans chapter 10 verse 15 and isaiah chapter 52 verse 7 it says feet in this scripture symbolizes the beautiful mission of spreading the gospel the act of moving going out to preach peace and bring good news is likened to the beauty of feet that bring salvation and proclaim god's reign 
this symbol symbolism serves as a reminder of the importance of mobility and active active participation in god's mission and this is very important guys uh i'm quickly going to speak now uh on god's mission okay now this is quite interesting um we need to understand that our god whom we call father has a mission okay he he that's why it's a mission day means god has a mission and what is his mission his mission is to bring salvation to the world now the word salvation uh, can be looked into two perspective one is personal salvation where we talk about uh, receiving jesus as our lord and savior and then uh, we are we know that we are saved and we can go to heaven that's personal salvation but the real word of salvation means bringing fulfillment bringing fullness bringing peace that's actually what it means that means god's mission is to bring solution to the society to the whole cosmos god's mission was always to see that justice is done to the world and it's quite uh, wonderful or it's quite unfortunate that we don't understand this because uh, if you read the old testament we think god was only interested in in israel right god was only interested in israel and god wanted to bless israel but uh, we cherry pick those scriptures and we think god was god only of israel but god though israel was chosen by god and the whole old testament goes around israel there are there are n number of scriptures that talk about god's heart for the nations god was god chose israel so that israel could be light to the nation that means israel could bring this god uh, the experience of god to the whole nation and so if you see in the book of jonah and maybe i will speak more about it in the upcoming services if you look at the book of jonah god chooses jonah uh, the prophet to preach whom god chooses an is prophet from israel he did not choose a prophet from israel to preach to people of israel he chooses jonah to preach to nineveh and nineveh was another nation it was a strong built built city there were so many people in that in that city and though they did not did you ever wonder why jonah did not wanted to preach to nineveh he was running the opposite direction god wanted him to go and preach to nineveh and he was running in the opposite direction why not because he was lazy not because he 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 had some other ideas it was because jonah thought that people other than israel are not fit to experience god you understand jonah was thinking that nineveh is their enemy nation i can't go and preach to them if i preach to them they will get saved they will experience god and i don't want these people to experience god and so jonah was running away from nineveh and uh, the mission of god was not just israel god wanted to save nineveh god wanted to save the whole world because he loves the whole world and so mission of god is to 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 bring his love into physical manifestations and how does god's love comes come into physical manifestation on earth is through you and through me through those who first experience him okay and so the bible talks about blessed is the one the feet of those who go and proclaim the message of the lord the good news of god what is the good news of god good news of god is god is there to bring solution god is there to bring goodness into your life god is there to bring justice into everyone's life that was the good news and so what jesus was doing is first he was pouring water on the feet of his disciples first equipping them and then he was cleansing their feet so that they are empowered to go and and continue the mission that god had for them 
you understand so uh, here i will talk a little bit about what we spoke on sunday service and uh, when the bible talks about bible in was written in greek right so in greek uh, when the bible talks about son of god or a child of god in the english translation doesn't do a fair job but in greek when it says child a child means a small baby it talks about the word it's the word there is technon but a matured son a a a, a child that is grown up the word for that is huios okay so there are two words whenever it talks about a uh, child of god in the scriptures uh, one word is technon the second word is huios so technon means when a child is born you know that's that's a baby child right it it cannot do anything all that a child or a baby can do is receive all the child can do is take from the mother take from the parents so when we experience jesus first time we are born again as small babies but when we are born as babies what is that experience that experience should be oh now i am a child of god and now he loves me abundantly god loves me abundantly unconditionally he has laid down his life for me and that's the time when you say i am a child of god you receive his love you receive what he has done for you you receive his healing you receive his miracle you receive those signs and wonders but christianity doesn't stop there unfortunately christianity has stopped till there where christians are just children of god they are just technon being technon is very important you cannot be who yours that is a matured son of god without becoming a technon and so first many christians are at only that level where they know god loves them where they they had a wonderful encounter with god they have experienced god they have experienced healing in their life they have experienced miracles in their life and so what jesus was doing when the disciples were with jesus for the 3 years of ministry of jesus all this all this disciples were literally like technon you know jesus was doing healing jesus was doing miracles jesus was doing so many things and these disciples were at the receiving end like technon they're like wow what a wonderful god we have wow we can see healings we can see miracles that is beautiful but as the end of jesus ministry when is about to be crucified now jesus is telling his disciple listen guys this your time of becoming technon is over now you have to be who yours so what he was doing is the washing of the feet of the disciple was actually telling them guys your time to be technon is over a child is over now i am washing your feet empowering you to go out now go out and now become the matured sons of god that what that was what was happening on monday thursday monday thursday is a day where every christian should realize that we are no longer supposed to be just technon we are now supposed to mature as christians we are supposed to manifest as the matured sons of god and so peter says oh jesus listen uh, don't 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 wash my feet you are you can't do that and jesus says listen peter if i don't wash your feet you have nothing to do with me you understand in other words jesus is what he's doing with this whole act of washing the feet he's trying to tell his disciples listen as i became servant to you guys you got to now be servant to the whole nations by being servant leader you are becoming a matured son of god and if you can't become a matured son of god then you have nothing to do with the father's business you see jesus at the age of 12 he said to his mother he was missing and when the mother came to search for him 
he said to his parents listen i am at my father's business i am at my father's business and so how do you know a christian is a matured christian a matured christian is the one who is now at his father's business do you understand okay whose feet is washed by the word now and he whose feet is ready to now go and preach the gospel to the nation to bring solution to the nation to bring salvation to the nations so that's where if you see before before jesus was baptized before jesus was baptized jesus was called jesus of nazareth the moment jesus is baptized the holy spirit comes on him and a voice from heaven says this is my beloved son this is my beloved son what does beloved son over there what word is there in greek the word over there in greek is not technon the word over there in greek is huios so god was saying this is my beloved matured son not beloved technon not beloved baby now when that voice came when the holy spirit came and when jesus was anointed uh, by the power of the holy spirit he was he was it was proclaimed that he was a matured son of god and then if you read further it talks about jesus going into the temple into the synagogue removing the scroll from isaiah and says the spirit of the lord is upon me god has anointed me to give sight to the blind uh, can where is that scripture let me read the scripture it says the spirit luke chapter 4 verse 18 to 19 it says the spirit of the lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor he has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to set the oppressed free to proclaim the year of the lord's favor do you understand when do you become a matured son of god you become a matured son of god when god's mission becomes your mission and my mission that's when you know you are a matured son of god and so till jesus was baptized he was just jesus of nazareth after jesus got baptized baptized now he became jesus christ that is jesus the anointed one G anointed for what what is the meaning of anointed anointed does not mean you come for a prayer meeting you say hallelujah 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 and you feel the power of god and you fall down on the floor and now you are anointed that doesn't mean anointing that is just a manifestation or a sign that you are anointed but really anointed means now god has set you apart and has called you for his mission that is called anointed that is called being christ christ the word christ means anointed so jesus when he was anointed he went baptized he went and he started doing his father's business he started doing the mission that god had for him and what was it he went to bring solution he went to bring justice he went to do things which the father wanted him to do you understand and so uh, you understand this whole thing about uh, washing jesus coming down washing the feet of his disciple is not just it's not just monday thursday we are reminded of some kind of humility we are reminded of some kind of uh, uh, the pastor has to wash the feet of uh, his people monday thursday is a day where you and i are reminded as christians that we have a mission that is god's mission in our life it's a reminder for us that tells us that we are no longer just children of god babies of god but we are now also step into we have to now also step into becoming the matured sons of god and those who are those who are called to be matured sons what are they supposed to do they are supposed to now make the father's business their business the father's heart their heart 
my question to each one of us including myself is what the father's heart is for the world is it my heart too you see you see christianity is not just about experiencing the love of god and that's it christianity is about experiencing the love of god and going out and spreading that same love to the others around so christianity is not just about experiencing solutions in your life and my life but it is about bringing also after that experience bringing also solution to the whole community in uh, around us and so the missions are divided into two one is called christocentric mission the other thing is called cosmocentric <coughs> mission christocentric mission is a person is always talking about believing in jesus and experiencing solution in your life experiencing salvation in your life that is christocentric mission but that is important but the other part is cosmocentric mission cosmocentric mission is when you say that the this this world that i'm living in is an ailing world it's a corrupt world and so i need this this world i need to bring the kingdom of god into this world you know we we pray this pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name that kingdom come what does that mean that kingdom come means you start bringing the the solution you start bringing justice you start bringing fairness into this world okay so we don't understand couple of things that uh, that we pray you know we think we just pray our father who art in heaven thy kingdom come we think uh, there's going to be end times and something will happen jesus will come flying in the cloud and uh, everyone will go up there and that's what is called the kingdom of god that's not reality god wants us to bring his kingdom down on earth that means god wants us first to experience his love know that we are children of god and then god wants us to grow up as matured sons of god and manifest the kingdom of god the solution of god salvation of god into every area of our life into a community into a society and that's the reason why god brings a beautiful model called as the church a church god doesn't want us to bring solution into the world as one man god wants us to bring solution into this world as the body of christ and what is the body of christ the body of christ is the community it's the church that comes and bring solution into the world so uh i just wanted to share this tonight how can we now bring be the sons of god we all are 100% if you believe in jesus if you believe in jesus we are all children of god that means we are we we deserve goodness in our life we deserve blessings in our life we deserve healing in our life healing is our birthright miracle is our birthright solutions in our life goodness in our life is our birthright that means experiencing god's love is what we can experience right now every any moment you can cry out to god saying abba father and god will pour out his love in your life that means a child of god and everybody who believes tonight who is online here we are the children of god no doubt about it and this feeling this knowing that we are a child of god makes us secure person you understand if you have you know that you are loved by god trust me most of the wrong things that are happening in our life will go away our insecurities will go away our fears will go away our anxieties will go away 
our worries of life will go away because we know God is going to take care of us. We are just children of God. Right? But that's not it, guys. That's not over. To become child of God, we just need to believe in, in God. We just need to believe in Jesus. But to become a mature son of God, it's about putting things in practice. It's about be, being in action. It's about going out there and doing what the father's heart wants to do. That's when we say, now we are mature sons of God. And so uh, Romans, in the book of Romans, it says, the whole creation is waiting for the manifestations of the son of God. That means the ailing, corrupt cosmos is waiting for you to come and bring solution into that area. And how do we do that? We do that through the church. Because the church is the model that God has designed where children of God start maturing in the household of God, start maturing as sons of God. So, you know, when I say, when I say this, uh, I'm not saying, come on, from tomorrow, go out there, do something great. Do go out there and start uh, preaching on on the road. Go out there and do something uh, crazy. I'm saying, start taking step by step your steps towards bringing the solution that the world is asking for. And I would say personally, if you ask me, how do I start? How do I start becoming a matured son of God? I would say, first, let's start with praying for others. Because when you pray for others, now you are maturing. You see, when, when you pray for yourself, it's beautiful. I mean, everyone should pray for themselves. But if you are only praying for yourself, then I would say you are still not matured. You're still a child and you just want to experience God. You want to experience God. You want to experience God. But the day you say, I want to pray for people around. I am so blessed. God has loved me so much. I want to also uh, make others experience that same love of God. I have experienced healing in my life. I experienced miracles in my life. I've experienced God is so awesome. He's so good. He loves me so much. Now, let me pray for others. That they too may experience the love of God. They too may experience healings of God. They too experience the miracles of God. And so the first step I would say that we need to do is to, to, towards a step towards matured, maturity as matured sons of God is start praying for others. How do I know that somebody is maturing as Christian? Okay. I will know that somebody is maturing as Christians when I see somebody start, start praying for others or praying for his church community, for praying for people around him or her, praying for the nation, praying for what is going around in the society. That's the first step. When you get that first step, Trust me, God will now direct you towards your second step of maturity where God will tell you how practically going out and bringing solution, you need to bring solution into the life of others. And so first, let's get the first step done. Bef because the foundation of uh, Christianity, I would say, is prayer. And so let's get the first step done. That's the reason why uh, we have we have we have you know literally installed three activities. Okay, second step, first, first and second step is to first feed yourself, wash your feet with the word. Wash your feet with the word. Okay. And so build your your house on the right foundation. And so what we did is we we have Every day we have Bible reading activity where you can read the word 
and you can uh, literally get pickled in the word contemplate on the word and learn so much from just reading one chapter a day it's such a easy thing and then wash your feet with that word and then we have installed another uh, activity where we have early morning worship and praying in tongues what do we do we just worship god we just experience god like children we experience his, his presence like children of god like tech technon of god come on god fill us with your love fill us with your presence we experience god in that way and then in the night we have 10:30 uh where we pray for our community we pray for each other we pray for the church that because it's so important to pray for the church we important to pray for the people in the church because as the church becomes stronger that church starts bringing solution to the whole community whole society whole nation later on and so how does god's model work god chose israel to be light to the whole nation or to to the whole all the nations same way god chooses now you and then god chooses a church so that this church and you become light to the nations bring solution to the nations so i would really encourage you this evening uh as we celebrate monday thursday i'm sure this word that i'm sharing is washing your feet empowering your feet to go ahead and to become the who yours the matured sons of god the one who now is not just a baby who cries and god breastfeeds you but now you are maturing and ready to go and to do your father's business go and do what god wants you so god's cry becomes your cry god's desire becomes your desire what god wants is what you want that's when you are a matured son and so i really encourage you this evening think sit back contemplate on this you know more than any prophetic more than any healing more than any miracle sometimes we need to understand that it's time to grow up somebody comment below and say it's time to grow up you know because i've been in 15 years of ministry more than that actually and i still see after 15 years people don't grow up many people are still in the same phase many people are talking about uh, they call me and say brother please pray for me prophet please pray for me some demon is troubling me please pray for me i'm seeing uh, demons in my dreams so my neighbor did black magic brother please pray for me do this for me do that for me once you are matured you don't ask people to pray for all the time once you are matured you are on a mission people should come to you and ask you for prayers that's what maturity is if you are a christian 10 years 15 years 20 years or even 5 years and nobody is coming to you to ask for prayer if you are a christian and you have you are not doing anything for god if you are a christian and you are not serving god it's time to re, to to reflect and see whether i am technon or i am hihuyos if your question is god what can you do for me then you are still technon when you mature your question will be god what can i do for you and so somebody just type and say it's time to grow up somebody say it's time to grow up and say to yourself touch your heart and say today monday thursday it's time for me to grow up it's time for me to grow up it's time for me to do something for god it's time for me to do something for the church it's time for me to do something for the society it's time for me to do something for the world 
to bring god salvation you see god has no hands god has no feet you understand god is spirit the bible says god has no hands god has no feet but god has you as his hands god has you as his feet and god is looking out for christians to mature and become his hands and feet when we do that we walk as matured sons we manifest as matured sons we manifest as kings we manifest as the light of the world and where there is light there is no darkness you see when you become you know when you are not matured you will run after healing when you are not matured you will run after miracles when you are not matured you will always feel the demons are running after you but the day you get matured trust me healings will run after you miracles will run after you signs and wonders will run after you the day you get matured trust me finances will run after you you don't have to run after mature because the cosmos is waiting for the manifestation of the son of god your finances are waiting for you to manifest you men to see you as a son of god the day your finances see you that you are taking your father's business in hand trust me your finances will run and come into your hands the day you shine as a light of the world as a matured son of god i'm telling you no demon demon no evil spirit can ever touch your life never i am i am one guy who never never ever have slightest fear of any evil spirit trust me i get dreams i get uh, crazy stuff in in the night i see crazy stuff but i never get afraid of it why because the light is never scared of darkness and so when will you become the light of the world when you will become the salt that jesus talks about when you will become you will become when you take father's business into your hand and say i'm in business somebody come and say i'm in business tonight and so tonight let this word wash your feet as jesus washed your feet i'm coming to a close and let me pray for you as jesus washed his disciples feet sending a message saying that i am a leader but i am becoming a servant to empower you to become sons of god as jesus washed the disciples feet i wash your feet tonight with the word of god and i pray and i pray with this washing of the feet with the word that i share right now i trust right now as i pray there'll be signs miracles and wonders because the word will follow with signs as i wash your feet with the word tonight this proceeding word of god tonight that empowers you to go out there and to bring salvation maybe through prayers for others by interceding for others maybe through sharing the gospel maybe talking to people about jesus maybe telling people to join a community whatever it might be maybe sowing your finances i release this word to empower you tonight i release this word to empower you tonight let it wash over your life and may your feet become blessed in jesus mighty name i pray let's all raise our hands wherever you are and i pray father i pray release of your glory this evening release of your presence this evening shatara baka i pray for healing miracle signs and wonders now to start happening to back up the word 
and to confirm the word that I shared right now. Right now, everyone watching me, everyone listening to me, signs are happening right now to confirm the spirit in that in this word. Miracles, healings, finances are falling in place in Jesus' mighty name. Fear is going away. Everything that is troubling you is going away because you are rising up as a son and a matured son of God. Father, I pray, release of your spirit right now on this day, on this auspicious day where we celebrate, where we commemorate and where it reminds us that we need to now rise up as sons, as matured sons in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 I want you to right now check check yourself for miracles. If you're having any pain in your body, I want you to check right now because healings have started happening. If you're having pain in your body, check for yourself right now. Is something supernatural is going to take place tonight right now as we rise up as sons. Your healing will manifest because you manifest as a son of God. You are manifesting as a son of God. Your finances will manifest. Your miracles will manifest right now in Jesus' mighty name. People who are experiencing supernatural, there'll be gold dust, there'll be oil coming into your hand, there'll be gemstones falling in your house, wherever you are. Because my angels know that a son is manifesting right now in Jesus' mighty name. I want you to check and if something is happening, unmute yourself and let me know quickly. Give your testimony so that we know what is happening. Go ahead. What's happening? Somebody unmute yourself. Share what is happening on your side. Please, instead of commenting, you can just unmute yourself and just let me know. Comment only if you can't uh, speak. Is Zina here? Uh, can she tell me about the testimony? Okay, yeah, Zina, go ahead. You want to test share? Quick, yeah, quick, brother, quick. I have oil on my hands. There's oil in your hands. Okay, wonderful. Amazing. Who else? Come on, quick, quick, quick. Silver dust on my hand. Friend, what happened? Silver dust on my hand. You got silver dust on your hand. Beautiful. Quick, quick, somebody else. Hello, I also got uh, oil and silver dust on my hands. Wow, oil and silver dust. Amazing, amazing. Miracles are happening. Signs are following. Yes, Nasilia. Yes, silver dust on my hand. Silver dust on Nasilia's hand. Beautiful. Yes, Mezvila. Silver dust on my hand. Silver dust is coming on your hand. Beautiful. Mezvila, there you go. Who else? Keep, keep checking. People who are receiving healing, unmute yourself. Check for healing. People, I want you to look around your house. You will see gemstones and all that thing falling down. There's going to be something, feathers falling. Check, 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 keep checking. And just let me know quickly, quickly, quickly. Come on, move as son of God. Move as sons of God. Move as daughters, mature daughters of God. And unmute yourself and just... Let me know what's happening on your side. Quickly, one last minute, and then we close this up. Tomorrow, we are going to... Uh, tomorrow, we are going to meet up again for our Good Friday service online, same time, 10 p.m. I will let you know the if there are any changes. So yeah, Jonathan, go ahead, tell me. Not me. Me, Shanto. Silver dust in my Shantal. kitchen. Before. Okay, you got silver dust. Oh, mm -hmm. wonderful. Kitchen. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, so let's get ready. Let's spend time in prayer tomorrow. Uh, is gonna. It's an awesome uh, evening. Uh, to really uh, understand, receive what Jesus has done for us by dying on the cross. So. God bless you guys. See you. Take care. And we stay connected uh, through our WhatsApp uh, activities. God bless you. Yeah, Jonathan, you want to say something? No, I just want to say amen. Thank you for the, for the, for the evening thank and you. for the advice.
and the growth in god amen amen thank you so much god bless you guys and yes if you have not yet been part of our uh, regular activities that's our early morning worship evening intercessory or uh, daily bible reading soaking in the word uh, please this is an opportunity for you to rise as a son and be part of it god bless you have a great night take care bye hey saints bye bye